and we are live we are live okay well um welcome to the webinar and indeed to this brave new world um my name is dave k and i'm a ceo at peak content and i'm going to be introducing this webinar and uh then uh taking questions and uh passing them on for stephen who'll be leading the webinar um away through um so just a quick note to say what we'll be covering um so with a little bit of background, so we at uh, Peak have worked with Stephen on this, and this piece of work is essentially exploring the attitudes of the uh, mass mainstream towards um, the current coronavirus uh, crisis. Um, Steve will talk about um, how he's approached it, what's happened um, in terms of the research, and, and indeed talk about how how quickly we've had to respond to things and how essentially it's a, it's a changing situation day by day. Um, all of the video content that you see in this presentation and also video content that we'll uh, share with you after this presentation um, has been generated by us uh, at Peak and we've had people um, capture their stories uh, for us um, on the ground uh, by their smartphones um, and um, helped bring to life some of their reality. So without further ado, I'm going to hand you over to Stephen and I'll, and I'll see you on the other side. And um, um, if you have questions, please uh, put them into us via the question option um, and we will um, get through as many as we possibly can at the end. Um, but we will be finishing at 3.30 on the dot. Any questions we don't manage to get through, um, we will come back to you individually afterwards as well. So without further ado, I'm going to hand over to Stephen to take us through the insights. Welcome, everyone. So I'm Steve. I'm Managing Director of The Outsiders. And this is a self-funded project we've done looking at the coronavirus and its impact on the mainstream. Main, mainstream. I think, firstly, just to say welcome to the new normal. This is my first webinar, so I'm a little bit kind of nervous, so you just have to bear with me, because I've never done one before. So what I'm going to take you through is a little bit about the objectives and the methodology. I'm going to talk a little bit about who are the mass mainstream, how did they feel, what their kind of public feelings, what their kind of challenges in terms of family and values? What do they think of the government actions, views on the lockdown, how they're feeling about staying in and what they're doing? What are the role of brands? And a little bit of kind of crystal ball kind of thoughts looking at trends in the future. I think one of the things to say about this presentation is it was extremely kind of fast moving. So we finished two days ago. We're planning the kind of next stages that we're going to do, but obviously things have kind of shifted a little bit from what we're going to take you through. So objectives and methodology. So what we want to do is really understand the mass mainstream. Um, they're defined by the policy exchange as, a, as an audience called just, just managing audience. I think as an industry, we focus a lot on ABC1 and then we split into C2DE. But what the policy exchange did and what was actually taken forward by conservative strategy, election strategists was they looked at C1, C2 and a little bit of D. And they identified this audience, which is about 50% of the population, called just about managing. And there's a lot of information in, in the link there on the policy exchange. But they're kind of people who have mainstream cards like the Ford or, or, or Vauxhall. They're not in managerial kind of positions, but very, very kind of family kind of centric. And we're going to look at them, what their kind of feelings about the coronavirus, how has it impacted on their behaviour, what are their responses to government policies, their views on, on brand responses, and again, a little bit of kind of navel ga gazing. So what did we do? So we looked at people in a, a range of different locations, including Boston, Bolton, Grimsby, Dewsbury, Manchester and, and Felton. Um, and then we had Skype chats. So 15 hour Skype chats with them. We did Facebook chats as well. And we accessed their Facebook pages. And I've got a little panel, which I've used for kind of Brexit and also about uh, Boris and his election victory, where we've in the past looked at people's Facebook pages and we opened that up again. We also, with Peak Content, did six flip uh, pre-tasks with first time conservative voters from the North to really measure their attitudes and any particular political fallout. There's a lot I'm gonna take you through, so I'm gonna skip through, but we will send this to everyone after, and we're more than happy for you to share with, with all, all your uh, clients and your agency staff. So a little bit about the mass mainstream. So this is before the crisis. So for them, the present is difficult. Uh, they're often borrowing money, 
not in massive debt, but they're living hand to mouth on a month to month to basis. They tend to look for, to the past, like nostalgia and nostalgia bands, as it makes them feel safe. They like people that are straight talking and celebrities that are straight talking, such as kind of Piers Morgan. They laugh. So they laugh at others because it makes them feel better. And they laugh at themselves because their life is tough and it helps them to kind of survive. They value strength and like strong characters. One of the things they initially admired about Boris was his, his, his strength. One of the key kind of values is being respected. So they want to be respected and want to be respected by other people, especially in their community. I think one of the big differences between them and middle class audience is they're very interdependent and collectivist. So much more collectivist kind of mindset. They live in each other, live around their kind of family, support each other. Many for three generations haven't gone more than kind of five miles. They're very kind of community minded. And as such, the community and family are the bedrocks of their lives. They have strong support networks. So, and they rely on those networks to help each other when they're going through dark times. And you can see those networks being dialed up a little bit later. They're often sacrificed for others and they've often put their children first and push their children to have everything they wanted to, even if that means they have a lack of funds themselves. Socially conservative, and they are really socially conservative. You take something like crime, they think the government should be very, very tough on crime. They're cynical, they don't generally trust brands, but there are things they do trust. The NHS, the army, the royal family, and Google, which is their first port of call for many things. And they fear change and, and they dislike change because change really kind of impacts them and they're often on the front line of the people that suffer. So what do they wish for, for in terms of a country? They want a country that's safe and secure. They talk a lot about kind of terrorism as one of their kind of concerns. They want to feel their family is protected. They want their living standards to be protect, protected. They're worried about community because community gives them a sense of belonging and trust. And But they feel that community has been dissipated over the past few years as people from other areas have moved, moved in into their local kind of regions. People work in 24 seven, so you don't know your neighbor, the big walls go up. They dislike the greed, the big companies have been uh, maximising for many years and they want fairness and fairness is probably the key word that they really want. They want fairness from companies and they want to see people doing more and the money trickling down. They want reward for hard work, they work hard, they believe in patriotism and protection of the country and they live for their holidays. So what's happening? What's happening with the coronavirus? What's their kind of public kind of feelings? So initially a few are dismissive, and it was interesting to look at the Facebook post because you saw you saw much more dismissiveness in the earlier days, but that's starting to kind of heavily kind of decrease. So you'll say you'll see things that people say, well, more people died of flu, and a lot of stats kind of justify why we shouldn't worry. So this was uh, some of the initial kind of reactions. You're seeing this becoming more and more kind of rare. Most people's feelings are dark, so what you're seeing is a lot of frustration, a lot of anger, about a lot of confusion, what's happening, what am I doing, a lot of worry and anxieties about life, uncertainty and a lot of restfulness. So a lot of kind of tension in people's lives and people really feeling that kind of sense of, of, of tension and how it's kind of impacting on me, my family and my community. There are some that kind of buried their heads in the sand. There's some that said they don't want to be told what to do, but they are much more becoming a kind of minority. So here's a little video about how people are feeling. You realise it's spreading like wildfire and there is no stopping it. It is like the bushfires in Australia. That is probably the best way to describe it. It started and now it is just going to just literally wipe out the week. It really is, whether they be vulnerable people or old people or sick people. I'm worried about catching it in case of I don't want it to be my time. 
coming to this uh, coronavirus thing, epidemic, it is quite an epidemic, epidemic and quite fed up with it, to be honest. I'm fed up and back to it. All I want to see is uh, it go back to normal. I just want to wake up in the morning and it's all gone back to normal. It just reminds me of, of the film 28 Days. It's like, you know, it's coming true. The panic's set high now. It's gone from one extreme to like 100 um, within a matter of hours, uh, days. I'm more worried. I get more worried about it each day regarding what's going to happen. It's all up in the air. It's all the unknown. It's what are we going to do next? Um, I'm worried about his jobs, I'm worried about the bills, I'm worried about isolating, I'm worried about being away from my family, I'm worried about my kids. The um, mental um, health of a lot of people um, is going to up. Um, I feel like there's going to have to be some sort of support and um, extra support out there for these people that are going to, uh, it's going to affect their anxiety levels and their mental um, health, um, as I really do believe that this is going to be um, impacted significantly to those uh, people. We're supposed to be so many metres apart from one another. To me, going to that supermarket at eight o'clock in the morning is a breeding ground of all of if you're more likely getting it than not. But we have to go because come two o'clock in the afternoon, there is no, nothing on the shelves. There is no meat, there is no bread, there is no milk. It's a free for all of people just thinking me, 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 and not thinking about anybody else. In my opinion, it's just totally selfish, beyond belief. So as you can see, some interesting kind of fears and, and worries that are coming forward. So some people talked about, especially on the Facebook posts, that they're feeling that they're in the concept of a kind of war. So a lot of people are referencing back to the kind of Second World War, that idea of a kind of collective kind of identity. This woman here, she got an information letter from the daughter's kind of college, but look how it ended. May God bless you and keep you safe during these challenging times. We invite all who wish to do so to join us in prayer for our brothers and sisters in the human family facing this challenge, wherever they are in the world. And there's a lot of talk about, we're at war, I've been crying a lot, we're in a health war. So what, what are people worried about? They're worried about their health and the health of their kind of loved ones. Jobs and money came through quite strongly as well. How do you pay your bills? How, how, how do you buy your essentials? Childcare, a little bit more with an older generation, you've got worries about the rising kind of crime and uh, there's going to be an increase of crime as people have less and less kind of money and resources. People are worried about provisions. Are they going to starve? How are they going to get provisions? How much time will it take to get provisions? And we'll talk more about this in, in the concept of, of the lockdown and how people are feeling. Some have already been hit by economic tragedy. So people are talking about their Facebook posts. You saw people talking about they've been laid off. People asking for kind of jobs, asking others for jobs. A lot of people telling them to, to become delivery drivers or go and work for the kind of supermarkets. Certain industries such as the travel industry is, is collapsing. And some people are no, no people who are kind of suffering. So someone's dad had actually kind of passed away, a friend of theirs, dad had kind of passed away. Spoke to one respondent who's actually, partner is actually recovering from the C virus. And, and these feelings are going to come more and more kind of known. Um, another one here. So again, I will share these with you so you can go through the Facebook post in more detail. But I now have friends in, in hospital. Humour is being used as a kind of antidote, kind of laughing at it, at the kind of disease, kind of kind of pushing it a kind of away, laughing at people's kind of behaviours. Britain's during the corona outbreak. Come on, let's have it, you slag. Obviously, the image of the, the woman with kind of corona there. And there's a little bit of dialing up of kind of gender banter, which is something I'm picking up from the kind of men. So 
what if this coronavirus is just man flu and now women are realizing just how bad we've had it for years um there's one here about kind of the fishing lakes is a uh, designated kind of local quarantine centers and a famous one that was on the media a lot is being created by women think about it no sports all pubs shut 14 day quarantine systems of corona are like flu they know that's our kryptonite so challenges to their family these people are really really reliant on their family and for th often three or four generations will mix together support each other a lot especially during past dark times such as kind of recessions or family family problems that people have had what you're finding is the families are coming more insular where you'd have three generations kind of sharing each other mums of dads and children have kind of shut off together um so they're not seeing their grandparents and that's pulling on that kind of safety net of the family and, and the worry of because people will lie on their family during the dark times distancing is creating worry and stress how are my parents doing how, how are my family members doing arguments in the family about the virus um, some people might say for instance that uh, it's conspiracy theory other people disagree some people say people should go out um, other people say they shouldn't but one of the main ones has been trying to convince parents to stay in and, and grandparents to stay stay in grandparents grandchildren relationships are being kind of challenged this has changed now but a lot of questions if we're divorced where are the children going to kind of stay have a families adopting new ways to communicate with each other whatsapp facetime skype really coming to the fore and i think another consequence of this is the value of family is being dialed up people may have ignored their family or not not communicated with their family as much but they're feeling them communicating more and more so some verbatim so at the moment the only family relationship is affected is my mum and dad they're high risk can't visit them we're a close family but we're isolating as much as possible and again i will send these through so you can see see them and read them at your own peril but here's uh here's just some videos <laughs> Feel isolated in the sense of when you're visiting. Um, have the, you know, have they got it? Have they got it? That kind of thing. Well, I'm starting to panic. I mean, I don't want to go near um, my grandma. Um, I'm having to stay away, and I'm close to my grandma. Um, I see her uh, often. It's just mainly worrying about other family members um, with already underlying illnesses like her, our grandparents, mums and dads um, and obviously they're not getting much shopping. Obviously I've got my grandma who I'm very close to, that's another concern, I've had to stay away from her um, just in case my, you know, uh, just in case she catches it, I don't know if I'm carrying it, I don't know, um, I, have a bit of a I had a bit of a cough the day, started getting paranoid, that were panic setting, so yeah, um, and I just feel like, I mean she gets down in the dumps as it is because she lives alone, so um my worries her, her mental health as well as her, her health in general she's not the best i am worried and concerned and anxious for people like my dad who's 75 and vulnerable um and even for my mom who's 67 although she's independent far more than my dad i'm so concerned for her because she has a lot of underlying health issues people are thinking i can't do that like my daddy lives three towns away uh, if he wants food he has to go out and get it i've offered to take it he's overly concerned about the children i'm, I'm just really worried and i'm wor wor really worried for their education how we're supposed to um educate our kids i don't want my kids to get behind uh on the maths and the english and you know and getting behind in in in, in school So as you can see, the network of the family feels like it's being pulled apart. So the next one is kind of the challenges to respect and fairness, which is probably the biggest bedrock of this kind of audience. And there's a real feeling that these two values have really been kind of challenged. Big shock at selfishness. Um, I think the, the picture on the right kind of kind of kind of sums it up, especially in terms of kind of the panic buying. 
see it here again, some kind of posts of people, you know, what's spreading fast and coronavirus selfishness and, and greed. And respondents express their feeling towards selfishness in different ways. Firstly, ranting about people. And secondly, as humour, naming and shaming, celebrating the opposite, so celebrating good behaviour, and then some people doing justifications of, of for why we shouldn't be individualistic. So a lot of ranting about those who don't follow the rules, those who are not listening to the guidelines. And I think the one on the, the right really sums up. This is an NHS worker. Just had a very stressful day at work, cleaning like my life, depending on it after each patient. Made me home late, drove past the pub, and every fucker's in there. Selfish bastards. I'm sending my kids to school next week while they are off chilling and they couldn't let, care less about us. Not keeping distance. People talking about the fact that people weren't obeying it. People enjoying themselves selfishly in, in the kind of parks. Parks are full of children climbing and climbing frames and just being publicly irresponsible. A lot of ranting about the bulk buyers. So blaming it's the middle and upper classes, ordering in extra fridges, filling them up. The worst thing is they're selling stuff on, on eBay. A, a fucking shambles is, is another quote here. So a lot of kind of talking about panic buying, that there should be a wall, wall of shame of people that are kind of doing the kind of panic buying. And concern about the impact of the, of the bulk buying, especially on, on the elderly people. So lots of images coming on Facebook of, of, of elderly people looking lost. And even the concept of the kind of empty shelves semiotically creates that feeling that things are kind of scarce, which, which is creating more worry and kind of anxiety. And here's some films. If the last few days are anything to go by, I dread to think what the last or next two, three, four weeks are going to produce. Normal people are turning into selfish people. Uh, everybody's just being greedy. It's th there is none of that camaraderie where that help their neighbour type thing anymore. That seems to have disappeared. A couple of weeks ago, we were um, sharing posts on Be Kind, um, and that seems to have all gone out the window at the minute. We're all um, being um, we're, meant, we're meant to be here for each other um, as a community, but um, to be honest with you, at the minute it's. Um, Everyone seems angry through this panic. I've learned that a lot of people are just selfish with all this panic buying. There's no, I mean, last week's uh, thing motto was be kind, and now it's just like, uh, forget you, uh, get, uh, this week uh, I'm getting, I'm all up for myself. They're all up for themselves, like chimpanzees and monkeys. They're just getting whatever they can. Um, every, every, it's every man for himself you know I think we've got a lot of selfish people in this uh, in the UK and uh, this brought out the worst in people this virus thing um, and uh, with the Brexit thing I'd, I'd rather have Brexit than have to put up with this well I think it's crazy manic I've never known anything like it like it's like a zombie apocalypse or something it's like people are going crazy for toilet rolls and uh, rice and pasta and you just can't get anything and then there's uh People queuing around Tesco's at like six o'clock in the morning, even in sleeping bags and tents to go and get food. I've never known anything like it in my entire life. We're going to the supermarket now, and it's absolutely ridiculous. What I'm, I can't believe what I'm seeing. Um, I, I go, I've, I went to Ads for the weekend. Couldn't find a trolley, couldn't find a basket. The car park's rammed. There's people arguing in the car park. Um, there's people um, taking pictures and videos of people in Asda, taking videos of the shelves. There's nothing on the shelves. There's, you can't get toilet roll. Um, I struggled to find nappies um, from a little girl. Um, I went to five different shops and not one of them um, supermarkets had um, my daughter's size. So that set me as a, a panic mode because I were down to my last four. People have become very selfish, very greedy, haven't thought of others. They are literally thinking of me, 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 me. And it's resulted back to that caveman theory where they have their um, kill or be killed. 
And this is really, this is really, really important to this kind of audience because they're collectivists. They rely on the group. And that feeling that the group has become selfish and everyone's look individualistic is just building on their kind of worries. So they're using humour as well to kind of condemn bad kind of behaviour. Here's a, a poem which I'll let you read later that someone kind of did. This is Bob. So no, no idea what wiped the earthings out, but they had the cleanest asses I've ever seen. So you're seeing a lot of humour, commemorative jewellery, to a way to remember 2020. A lot of humour to try and condemn the bad behaviour. Tesco's with the picture of the kind of toilet roll being shouted out. A lot of naming and shaming. Of, of, and this is a word that some of the older generation were calling them spivs. Usually shops that are really kind of putting up their prices. And we're seeing, seeing, I was seeing a lot of this on, on, on people's kind of Facebook posts. So charging 9 99 for hand, hand wash to check out these greedy mercenary, even the language they're using, greedy and mercenaries, very kind of negative kind of language to describe them. There's one here, a market store where people took photos were charging £15 for a bag of potatoes and £20 for a bag of, of onions. People were even writing in as well to the competition and markets authorities, listing certain kind of shops that are kind of paying too much. And a big warning, because these people will be punished and we'll talk more about this. People will boycott after this, the, these stores. Naming of shaming of celebrities. Richard Branson's really kind of getting it. So mainly because uh, he let, let off uh, 8,500 kind of employees, but also because he's got a lot of money and he feels that people, he's been kind of really kind of silent. People talk to also about Kim Kardashian kind of wannabes kind of jetting up off to places. Someone said to me two days ago, where's Elton John? Where's Mick Jagger? Where's these celebrities when we kind of need them? Tim Martin, chairman of, of, of W of uh, Witherspoons, criticised for saying that the pubs couldn't have the kind of affection. But also there's uh, a lot of stuff spreading around on Facebook at the moment. I think it was the 20th of March. His company got 48, uh, 58 million pounds in profits. On the 23rd of March, he made all his staff kind of redundant. There's big calls for his stores to kind of be boycotted. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. But these are the things that kind of people are kind of reporting. A lot of celebrations, good behaviour. Roman Abramovich really kind of hit the kind of headlines. Um, Gary Neville. And I love this one. Gaz is a rich sports personality. has given his hotels to NHS and will pay all his staff during the coronavirus. Dick, which is Richard Branson, an even richer billionaire who sued the NHS last year for millions, has asked the taxpayer for a 7.5 billion bailout and told his staff to take eight weeks off unpaid. Be like Gaz, don't be like Dick. So who's doing well? Joe Wicks is the one that everyone's talking about. People are using his kind of fitness uh, daily kind of routines. But other people talk about reality stars who are donating kind of clothes. Roman Kemp on, on, on Capital just being kind of helpful and just people spreading kind of good messages of kind of hope around. People doing justifications of why we shouldn't be individualistic, saying that this, we're a big society and, and we need to help the NHS. A lot of appreciation, though, on the positive of kindness. So people like doing nice kind of poems saying about how, how we need to be kind to each other and how the world's kind of changed, what the new reality is. Be nice to the kind of retail staff. A lot of people are talking about that on kind of Facebook, supporting the, the weaker. And what you're seeing, and this is an interesting term, collective resilience. I, I, I nicked this term, actually, um, from a book on, on Spanish, influ, Spanish flu. And it talked about how people were initially kind of selfish. And then everyone went into a feeling of collective kind of resilience where the group essentially becomes one and starts to create kind of new realities to help people. And what you're seeing is people organising volunteering, a lot of people shopping for the needy, food for NHS workers. This person's taking turns to buy de delivery meals for a friend who's a doctor at Newham. Heard about someone who cooked 200 cupcakes for NHS workers. People doing services for NHS workers, letting them block their drive, letting them park in their drive, run, running car garage sales companies. B 
businesses are rechanneling resources to, to help the kind of elderly people in local communities before the lockdown were doing swap shops people putting on their status they're going out shopping and saying does anyone else want help to the lovely story of a young kid using their pocket pocket money for toilet paper spoke to one woman recently actually yesterday and she was telling me that she's looking after 11 different kind of people um 11 different elderly within 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 her street so it shows you the spirit of what people are doing facebook group for many people especially females as the pubs kind of shut down and even before this crisis facebook was the kind of new pub and it's really been utilized in in, in that kind of way it's a savior for many kind of people it's universal meaning that everyone can kind of get regular kind of updates a lot of support networks um sharing of secrets like elusive kind of products are being kind of flagged up within kind of groups and just raising spirits in in these kind of dark times seeing kind of chat groups for kind of single people with kind of bingos and and and, and other activities music groups exercise groups and children classes so a lot of collective resilience coming through facebook kind of communities um we didn't report on, on, on yesterday's fantastic um, support of, of the NHS, which I think is a real embodiment of collective kind of resilience. But, but key workers are, are, the, are the real celebrities and people are talking a lot about them and a lot of God blesses you, a lot of pictures of, of the NHS, a lot of people wanted to support the NHS and also other kind of key workers as well. So, so people who saved the NHS our pride banners coming up a lot of kind of kind of posts and this is this applies to all kind of key workers not not just the nhs staff and i think that's really really important someone said to me and they said screw the ceos screw the footballers screw the music stars these people are the real celebrities and the, these are people that have been termed often the cleaners, etc., unskilled workers. But who are we turn to? Who are the heroes? Who are looking after the country? It's the key workers. And I think it's really, really important. They are the new step celebs. A lot of support for Tesco workers, having set times for them and applauding them with kind of flowers to kind of show their appreciation. I'm going to skip through the government actions quite quickly. Initially, when I wrote this, I was aiming at public policy and brand and, and communications. There hasn't been many public policy people uh, taking this up, so I will skip through it, but I still think it's of interest. At first, a few were kind of negative, a few are very negative towards the kind of, kind of government and the government kind of actions. I'll let you read this at your own leisure another kind of time. Most, though, were a little bit negative at first. They thought the UK's reactions were mild. They want to see the borders shut down far, far kind of earlier. However, there's been a shift and I'm seeing that most of the people that I spoke to are positive about the government's kind of actions. They felt Boris is handling things in, in a good way. Um, they're, pub they're publishing things like public, how do I pay my rent? Boris grants, is, grants and freezing mortgages. Public, what about my business? Boris is granting interest-free grants. Public, what about my kids? Boris closes schools. Public, what about my job? So it feels like Boris is listening and, 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 and acting. And there's general feeling that generally they're doing well. And for, for a party that's often seen as being non-caring, they're actually feeling like they're a party that's actually caring. This is from mass mainstream, remember that. So they feel that Boris has dealt with a hard task. He's listening, his regular updates. People welcoming the COBRA meetings, which feels like we're on a war footing. And it feels very strong and positive and reassuring. So Boris does not like a nanny state, but he showed yesterday he would go against his principles for the good of the country. And just a little video, the last video I'm gonna play about kind of reaction. know that they were offering um, some funding to help towards rentals and things like that so that would be nice if that um, does happen for those people that are going to be really struggling. Just take the advice that, is, that Boris is giving people please just listen to what he's telling you to do. The, the more that you listen and the sooner we all do it, the sooner that hopefully this is going to pass um, we have a bit of luck so yeah that's my views.
What do I think about um, Boris's recent announcement in regards to um, funds for workers? I think he's done a really good job. Um, I think it's reassuring um, people in work um, and helping with money. Um, I think it's a really good thing. I think he's done really well there. Um, he's really took one for the country there um, and he's doing really well. Um, what do I think about um, pubs and gyms closing? I think it's took, it's took necessary action. Um, I believe he's made the right choice. I mean, there's still people um, not listening to what he's been uh, telling people. Uh, he's been telling them to distance. People are not taking it seriously. Um, and I think closing these down um, will make people um, realise how important it is to go in and self-isolate and distance, make, make that distance between people. <laughs> At the moment, I honestly think if we went into 14-day quarantine and everybody went on lockdown, we'd have a better chance at fighting it than how it is at the moment. Because at the moment, some people, it's as if the, the rules are blurred. But I do believe we need a full lockdown for 14 days and then readdressing it, letting people who don't need to be out, out, and keeping other people at home, I don't think is the answer. I think we need a full lockdown to address the situation. And I think that's the only way we're going to get on top of it. Without an antidote, we really are at the mercy of others, which is a very scary prospect, considering I don't want to die. I don't want to get ill. And I certainly don't want anybody that I care about and love to get ill or die. Okay, so some interesting kind of things there. So, so as you can see, there's strong there's strong agreement that the pubs should be shut. And when it initially announced, they wanted it extended to the children playgrounds, place of work, worship, which has now been implemented. Positive response to support for workers, not the self-employed. We didn't explore that. Created reassurance, seen as a strong motive, and put made the government feel that it's on the side of the mainstream. So, well done, Tori, Boris, top man has put the great, great back into Great Britain. And positive reactions to the Chancellor as well. They felt his speech about 80% of the salary was really, really strong and, and reassuring. However, when they initially did it, there were some questions. So how does it work? How long will people have to wait? Will bills and rent be suspended? Will the money run out? So there's still questions that need to be kind of fulfilled. Self-employed until kind of yesterday, wanted kind of more kind of assistance and they felt they were being kind of left out. What you're seeing as well, I think what we saw with Brexit was the decline of trust in experts. And what's interesting here is we're seeing the reverse. So we're seeing that people are really wanting to listen to the experts and those that are in the kind of no. So the idea of the government with a panel of med medical experts has been really, really well received. Putting medical experts on communications, totally the right thing to do. Um, However, there's some terms, so it could have been clearer, things like social distancing, what does it mean, what's the criteria, can you kind of go, still go outside, and what's really messed, worked well with this audience, and you saw, you saw it in Brexit, you saw it with the kind of slogans that, that get Brexit done, that they, you run in the election, so this, this audience really operates on system one, so things that are short, such as save lives, works well, really, really well and it's really kind of impactful. But what's interesting is that citizens are actually educating each other about kind of policy. So people are saying this is what it is and this is what it means. And you're seeing a lot of these kind of education from others posts coming on to kind of Facebook. They wanted a lockdown. So there was frustration. I think that's the main frustration of government is they wanted the government to impose a lockdown. They want the government to be kind of tough. So People wanted the lockdown before the kind of announcement and people were talking to me, they're saying we need a total kind of shut, shut, shut down. There's a lot of memes that were circulating about the, the lockdown from kind of football players, what Luke, Luke Shaw might look like in, in a few kind of after the kind of lockdown to birthday celebrations and lockdown and the lack of kind of celebration. But mostly people were positive about the, the lockdown when it was announced. They said, well done, really, really good. Boris Johnson, really kind of important. 
and some could play back the kind of four kind of reasons of what you need to do in terms of, of the lockdown. However, there was a lot of confusion because it was a little bit kind of vague. Um, they want to know what business can go out and what ones can't. Can you look after pets? How would it kind of be policed? And what you've noticed through the government is that's become clearer and clearer over kind of time. I think the important thing to say is people are scared. So, so one respondent says, myself and, and my daughter, we're waking up late at night and we start thinking about the future and thinking about deaths and thinking about there's only be five people at the funeral and what if my children die or what if my grandparents die? People are really, really worried and they're really, really scared and they're scared about the lockdown totally, even though they want the kind of much more of a kind of longer kind of lockdown, one that's much kind of stronger. And they want it extended to kind of the tube, uh, the shoot, tube shut except for kind of key workers. They wanted the parts shut and they wanted the kind of fines imposed. They were annoyed that were people were ignoring the lockdown. So what does staying in, what does it kind of mean? What does it kind of mean for kind of behaviour? What are kind of people doing? Well, families are worried. They're worried about their children. They're worried, how do we educate our children? How do we keep them kind of occupied? How do we deal with, with children, for instance, who've got kind of disabilities? How do we work when, when, we, when we're trying to keep our children occupied? They're worried about relationships. How do you kind of sustain relationships with each other? How do you deal with lack of space? Will it mean more men in the kind of garden sheds? Will it mean a lot of kind of freedom and, and independence? And one of the worrying things you could see with this kind of audience, especially as men will often, in often cases, earn more than, than, than their wives or their kind of partners, is that when they can go back to work, what you might see, and if the state's not there anymore to support the children, you might see more traditional family models starting to take force where the mum stays at home as a care worker and the partner goes out to kind of work. But you see some quotes here, you know, battle for the bathroom, it's more a joke, going to be harder, but more men living in the kind of garden sheds. But I have a vulnerable adult who, who just can't adjust to kind of new routines. What, what do I do? Singles are worried, worried about social isolation and loneliness lack of support networks and just the concept of who's going to kind of look after them so a lot of kind of fear kind of coming forward from the kind of singles for some before the lockdown the barricades had kind of come down so they'd started to do this already so here's one post deliveries are being sprayed with detox before they're entering the home kids are not allowed kind of out after after but at the same time she's having a lot of kind of worries about food and where she can get kind of food from and that's a massive concern people worried about food so where do i get the food from groceries online are totally kind of blocked up what am i what am i going to do where can i get food 14th of april is my earliest kind of spot spot Interesting, some people starting to turn back to the kind of milkmen, looking for local traders, the fishmongers, the butchers who can kind of do, do deliveries for them. How are people spending their time? So this is early kind of stages at the moment. So people are doing things like dancing with their children, playing, colouring, helping with kind of homework, going on nature walks, even in the garden, gardening. One grand told me she started posting seeds to, to her young grandchildren, 11 grandchildren, so they can kind of grow kind of flowers during this kind of dark kind of times. Baking with children, playing in the kind of gardens, watching kind of Netflix, playing games and board games. So individually or with others, what are people doing? Beauty and makeup. I think that's an interesting one, but I did a lot of work with uh, women in Saudi and um, where women couldn't go out and what you saw there was women would spend a lot of time doing kind of their makeup and, and, and doing beauty to kill the kind of boredom. Don't know if that happened here, it's just a kind of theory. Learning kind of new skills, the reconnecting with kind of family, people talking about experimenting, cooking in kind of new ways, having moments of reflection, just thinking about kind of life and what it means, communal kind of games, rise of kind of escapism, um, reconnecting with nature, concepts of having more kind of sex as people are kind of bored, 
dealing with arguments and stress how do you deal with with, with kind of shared kind of spaces a lot of people talking about spring cleaning doing up their home rearranging their kind of rooms cleaning 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 decorating starting to do a kind of paint around their kind of houses so i'll let you go through these quotes in more detail at uh, different times so cooking more things in an interesting way loads of kind of recipe books which i haven't kind of used for obvious reasons we're tending to do things together so eating together watching television having kind of conversations as a kind of family so what about the role of brands so there's strong endorsement i'm going to do a clap strong endorsement of brands that are helping and these brands are being seen in a positive light. So talking about supermarkets providing shopping times for the NHS, Iceland providing opening times for the elderly, Costa providing free drinks for the NHS staff, Domino's providing free pizzas to NHS, Brewdog uh, seducing hand sanitizer. But, and it's an important but, most people think brands haven't stepped up. So they're more than happy to take our money, but when this shit hits the fan, where are they? They're self-centered, all they care about is themselves. You think brand, brands and ad agencies would have a task force to help to get together. I don't think many brands have helped apart from the kind of supermarket. So a real lack of observation of brands that are helping. So as consumers are going into the, the mode of of being citizens and collective resilience they don't feel that brands are acting at the same kind of pace and it's important because brands have spent a lot of money on social purposes and talk, telling you how they're helping people so even brexit as someone said just before brexit every brand was painting a doom and gloom end of the world scenario they all come out with strong opinions about how we're better off together in europe how they care about the country how they care about you but now we're in the biggest crisis we've faced. Most have disappeared up their own asses. People are angry and they're angry at brands. Brands that don't help will not be forgiven. So brands don't stay silent. Brands don't sit there and count your money. They sit up and make a, a move, sit up and make a move to help. Help us, we're all drowning. We need you to offer your hand. Help us, because if your hand does not reach out to us, you will never be for, forgiven. So another quote here after the crisis ends brands have not pulled their weight will sink faster than the titanic diversity sustainability even fucking brexit brands and companies like to talk the talk but when the chips are down they they do do a they do a fucking scarlet pimpernel sorry for my french but i tell you one thing after this uh this they can do those diversity campaigns they can do those sustainability campaigns but they might as well pour that cash down the drain because everyone knows that they don't give a shit. So brands that don't step up that now, if you start talking about social purpose afterwards, you talk about diversity, you talk about sustainability. If you haven't helped in this crisis, you will not be trusted and you might as well, you've wasted your money. So just another one. Brands over the last few years have been painting a picture of this nice world they're trying to create. But as soon as there is a crisis, there's the first one to turn their backs on you. So how can brands help? So there's several ways. Survival mode. People in survival mode. Can brands help to ease the pressure? Can brands give back in hard times? I think a classic example, and a lovely example someone said to me, and I really like this. They said, Sports Direct, they put their prices up of fitness products. Why aren't they giving skipping ropes and footballs to every kid in this country? Nike. People talked about, where's Nike? What's Nike been doing? Why is Nike not helping? Why is Nike not supporting? Why aren't they doing fitness tips? Why aren't they doing a Just Do It Spirit ads to help people? Anxiety. Can brands help counter the worry? Can you be an antidote to stress? Can you help with mental health? Really, really important. The vulnerable. Can you help the homeless? People did talk about that some uh, hotels have been helping the homeless. Can you help those at risk or, uh, and children or those who face abuse? Because domestic abuse will increase and it will be very hard for those when they're living with abusive partners to even contact you because their connections to the outside world will be completely cut off. Addictions, what do you do if you're a heroin addict? How are you going to kind of survive? Time with kids. Can brands help with exercise, craft, education and fun? Can you help get people relief of the boredom? 
escapism is really, really important. This is an audience that's going to need to, to escape. So can brands help people to escape their worries? Castling, people going into their castles. Can you help cultivate their castle, their homes, their gardens, and fulfill relation and how people can fulfill and have loving relationships within the castle? Getting cosy. People want a sense of coziness when they're in their castle. Can you help people be sensual and create a sense of coziness? Self-development. Can brands help people to self-develop, learn, and expand their mind and soul? Helping key workers. Can brands need to help the key workers? Feeling safe. Nostalgia will help people feel safe. So nostalgia brands, can you dial that up to make people feel safe? Can you showcase what you're doing to help local communities? Quest for joy. People like little things that smile. That can be little positive stories. It can be through just having a chocolate bar. Can you do things to help make people smile? Practical support for businesses. Brands need to provide ideas to help businesses. Mums, they often will be looking for new sources of income, such as eBay. Can, can brands like eBay not reduce their fee or have no fee to help mums as they try and have kind of income? Brands, people need to pay their invoices quickly. So if you owe money to big companies, they should be settling their debts as fast as possible. Act of kindness. Show hero acts of kindness. Show people Paint a picture, allow people to see a positive future, showcase what, a, what the future might look like, a positive future. Collectivism, and the government's doing this. Use collectivist language like we together and our. So last few kind of charts. These are crystal ball kind of thoughts. And I started doing loads of trends, but you can't really, because you can't really predict. This is changing so fast. No one really knows what's what the new normal, how the world's going to go. But I've just had some thoughts. They're really debatable, but I think there might be an increased connectivity within in the family. I think there's a reflection on self and reflection on relationship. Deep thinking. This is an audience that's found the diff present before this crisis very difficult. So tended to look back to the past and ignore the future. I think there's potential for them to start thinking about the future. Deep cleaning, investment in the home. A lot of questions about brands, greed and society, as you kind of seen. Play back to traditional roles in some quarters, which I talked about, and the rise in domestic violence and abuse, increase in mental health and anxiety. Saving on resources and careful management of what we've got and how we deal things. The art of the conversation before this, a lot of this mainstream fans said, I really liked it in the past when we used to sit together as a family and play ball games and eat together. I think you're going to see that conversation coming back. The concept of perfectionism, which was being challenged before this, I think it's going to be even more because people want to see true things that are authentic and I hate that word, but that sense of vulnerability. I feel there could be a drop in racism didn't see anyone and this some of the mass mainstream that I spoke to before have, have, have talked about their fears of migrants saw none of that conversation coming I think there's a feeling everyone's in it together and especially the fact that a lot of the NHS and a lot of people helping us are, are migrants so I think they'll be dialed up key workers are the new heroes more focus on 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 wastage and how you manage wasting cooking from scratch more people cooking from scratch rediscoveries of kind of craft skills that were lost so from the kind of 1960s and the microwave kind of generation we lost the ability to cook and knit and those skills that our grandparents kind of had i think a lot of those coming up sensuality was and, and sex was 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 always a problem the lack of kind of touch in the uk and i've talked about that in past presentations i feel that could come through more potentially an increase in porn consumption baby boom um potentially next year who knows potentially a massive spending at christmas once we come out of pandemic although people could hold back i've had debates with people whether what would happen here less use of public transport more driving this is really what's happened in in china after i think it was sars you, you saw that that people were taking public transport much less and much more driving and the same you saw that in china less people using the shopping mouths much more supporting of local. I think we might see, although people are going to get used to online, I think we might see a return on high street where you've got more kind of open spaces, but just that sense of supporting kind of local. Discovering Britain, I think you're less people will travel abroad. 
and I think we're seeing more united Britain. One scene is the Brexit and remain the base to feel really kind of redundant at the moment, even with this audience. In the long term, who knows? I think someone told me the cost of own government has already collapsed. But we can learn from history. And I love this quote. This is about the Spanish flu. So the Spanish flu re-sculpted human populations more radical than anything since the Black Death. It influenced the course of the First World War, pushed India closer to independence, South Africa closer to apartheid, and Switzerland to the brink of civil war. It ushered in the universal healthcare and alternative medicine, a love of fresh air, a passion for sport, and is probably responsible, at least in part, for the obsession of 20th century artists with all the myriad of ways in which the body can fail. How things will play out in the future, who knows? I suppose the only thing, if I was a betting man, I think Trump's chances of re-election are dropping rather radically. And on that note, I will end it and open to questions. Okay, great stuff. Um, Steve, um, you can have a look at the chat now, now you've uh, finished uh, speaking, and you'll see there's loads of really engaged commentary as you were talking. Um, what I'd like to ask everyone to do is if they have questions, just pop them in now and we'll try and get through as many as we can. Um, just one thing that kept coming up was um, do the presentation. Um, yep. So we'll, we'll be sending out the deck and also the yep. video clips to everybody who's on the, on the um, webinar. And we'll make sure to do that as soon as possible because things are moving at lightning speed. <laughs> so um, so um, look out for that. We'll be sending it through. Um, Next thing, um, just to, to kick us well, off. Add, Dave, sorry, just, just yep. to add, please share it with your clients. Borrow it, cut it. I, I'm not, I don't care about being referenced or not. I just want this to go out. I want people to share the knowledge because I think it's important to make this country a better place and help people in the most difficult times they've ever had. Yeah, exactly. And all the um, permissions for the for the videos as well are, are there so we can share them as well. Um, Okay, Steve, to kick us kick us off, actually, um, the question I actually have for you is, with, with everything that's going on, do you think there's going to be any social disturbances off the bat? It's a really good question, actually, Dave, because if you look at the history of, of violence, if you look at the history of when we've had disease globally, there's, it's usually followed by by social disturbance. And I picked up on, on YouTube, which was interesting, was that some people started recutting the... 2012 i think riots or the london riots and calling them the 2020 riots personally i think as we're moving into collective resilience i think it's less and less likely but i think where you're going to see the anger where you're going to see the social disturbance is going to be on social media and i think it's going to be brands and celebrities really feeling the wrath of the population good one um okay another question for you um so this is just to do the um, channel Four support of clap for our carers um any thoughts on that sorry what well, sorry what channel for the carers brilliant really well received this is exactly the kind of things that people people should do it's exactly what should be done supporting the nhs brands coming together and supporting the nation brilliant um I don't know if everyone. Okay, okay. Uh, to hear. I've, just, I've just seen some people saying they can't hear me. Um, I'll. Uh, I'm not on mute. I, hope, I think some people can hear me. I'll pop the questions in um, after I ask them as well. Um, another question for you: What do you think of other research companies' work, um, and what research are you doing next? So I think there's a. I think the work out there. Is, there's a lot of research companies doing lots of really really good stuff. I know. Canvasate have done stuff. I know there's, I think White Rabbit are doing things. And I think it's great. I've, I think this isn't a time for anyone in the research industry to be competitive. I think this is a stage where we should be working together. I asked the Media Research Group and I asked the MRS, I think you should be creating hubs of information where all research companies can drop their hubs so that clients, governments, and brands can access this and help make the country a better place and the world. Good stuff. Um, Steve, I hope you've got a glass of water to sip on because there I are have. loads of okay, it's good. Um, we've got we've got half an hour. I'm gonna just pick up some of the questions that have been coming in here. Um, what do you think about the sort of 
the generational aspect of all this um older people people being more affected whilst young people are still going to the pub and park etc so what what's going on between the generations so but i think you saw you initially i think you initially saw some of that um i think there was a, there was a sense that young people thought they were kind of immune and actually with this mass mainstream it wasn't actually even just young people i think there's something about this audience where they don't like to be told what to do and there's a look there's a strong belief with some quarters in fatalism that you take fate and what will be will be i'm seeing a quite a systematic shift of that and that mentality since we've had the lockdown and i, I think people are starting to to get this i think the only thing i'd always say about millennials and, and 18 to 24s and different definitions is that that with this audience, an 18-year-old who's living in in an estate in say in 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 London or in another area probably has more in common with an 80-year-old than they do with an 18 to 24-year-old in Shoreditch. So so I think you have to be careful there. But I think people's reactions are coming together. I think we're really starting to see a strong degree of collective resilience. Good stuff. And I guess just to follow on from that, how how quickly do you think people are adapting to this new normal? Um, the question itself is how quickly are people adapting to this new normal? For example, if lockdown lasts for one to two months, how will behaviours level off continue to change? I think one of your last questions is what we're going to research next. And I think the next thing I'm going to do is in three weeks start monitoring how people are feeling about this lockdown. I don't I I don't know the answers to that. I'm just seeing what initially people are uh, a feeling yeah again there's a lot of worry a lot of kind of anxieties so one woman said to me a really interesting point she, she said in which i thought was interesting it's just i'm going on a diversion but she said everyone was always worried in this community about gangs and my kids being involved in gangs and in one way i'm i'm happy that they're kind of kind of in but i do worry about social connectivity and they said I, another woman said i'm really really worried about my grandchildren because children need other children around them and if you're a seven-year-old and you've got no connection with other ones what kind of children how's it how's that going to impact on children and i don't know the answer to that i'm not a psychologist and and it's it's so hard and so fast moving and it's really hard to kind of kind of predict but i think it's something we we're going to monitor I, and i call on other research companies other advertising agencies to also monitor this because i think together we can we can do some real positive things um here's a question around london versus the rest of the country do you did you was there much conversation around how people are behaving or adhering to the rules in london versus outside of london not not really i i, th I think i think in the in the north what i saw in the north was was people weren't quite taking it as serious at first and then it's they, the penny started to drop and, and people started to i saw a lot of debate in in, in the north around how we should stay in, how we should kind of, kind of, kind of be kind of tougher. In terms of research, the only research we did was in the region of Felton, which, which is is more working class kind of area, which probably has more in comparison with the with the north. But I think again, that's a, a brilliant question that pe people should explore. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I like this question as well. Um, how optimistic are you, Steve, about what's happening or going to happen in a post-corona world when it comes to? Brilliant uh, question. Well, great question. I, I love that question. So it's sad that it's, it's taken, it's going to take death to make a better society. But I honestly believe that things will be better. I think we've, we've focused on the I a lot. I think in the last few years, we started to see a shift from individualism to collectivism. Um, and I think that push is going to become stronger. And it's something I, I really welcome them and, and although the consequences of getting there have been devastating um and do you think these will be long-term or short-term shifts do you think things are going to happen quickly i think, I think, I think they're going to be long-term shifts i think we're going to see big long-term shifts good stuff um question here about how banks can help beyond just giving mortgage breaks and were there any attitudes picked up towards banks and big finance i think one of the big things is is helping people on loans really uh, giving degrees of kind of credit helping people on loans giving people loan breaks i think banks banks i think banks can can do a lot and i think 
you know, banks have had a negative reputation for a long time. And I think this is a real opportunity for them to, to get out and, and, and help people. Giving advice, money advice is good. Saving advice, helping people with suggestions on how they can save money, how they can help on kind of resources. So I think banks can, can really kind of help a lot. I think utilities companies can really help a lot as well. And that's one thing. That's why I did sit here a lot of criticism. The utilities companies have ripped us off for a long time. It's about time they started putting brakes and really kind of helping us. Good stuff. Um, and do you think the media are pushing out scary stories of young people dying to deter people from going out? It's really interesting because I read I read an article in Stan, Standpoint magazine yesterday, which basically, which is quite a right wing magazine, but it's an interesting magazine. And then they, one of the articles there made the argument that this is being perpetuated by 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 the media. I think the media is going to feed on this, and I think the media is going to escalate this. But with or without the media, behaviour is going to going to change quite significantly on 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 this, and I think some of those scare stories are, are starting to work, I think, in a way. So I think maybe, maybe this is my political view, but maybe if those scare stories help to keep people stay in, then it's a, it's a good thing. The second part to that question is, do you think the government might have some input into those scare stories? I'm, I'm, I'm sure they do. I'm, I, I don't know for sure, but, but I imagine they do. And, and I'm, you know, even the, the whole concept of safe lives, which, which feels like a very kind of Dominic Cummings kind of kind of saying, um, very short, punchy, talked about, referenced on social media, hit system one um, for audiences that don't often pont pontificate about politics and, and and the world. I think those kind of things are, are really cutting through and, and working working well. Stuff. Um, this one um, is just around whether you think Britain itself will become more global or more local as a result of all this, and then. Just to add to that, I'd be one kind of curious to know what your take would be with Brexit, which is a word we haven't used very much, and that's unusual. I know. I, know. I, I think I'd, I'd, it'd be interesting to, to get debate afterwards. I, I think the concept of Brexit and, and Remain are more or less dead. I think what you're seeing is people wanting a, a united com country. And I think for many years, I think the UK had been pulled into polarity. It's not just Brexit and Remain, you've got left, you've got you got right, you've got city dreader versus rural. We've pulled into polarity Britain, which doesn't feel very British because we're a trading nation. We like the middle. And I think this is pushing us very much in, into, into, into the middle. I think it's a really interesting point, actually, about will, will this make us more global? I think if you look at studies of kind of kindness, what, 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 one of the interesting things that I saw was that more middle class people tend to be more kinder to outsiders and this audience tends to be more kinder towards their family and local community and i think the consequence of this is i think you're going to see a universal kindness that cuts across both both inner directed to being kind towards my family and kind of friends and my community and an outer directed kindness to feeling sympathy and kindness towards the kind of world and and kind of others um, good stuff. I'm just jumping back down some of the earlier questions that came in. Sorry, it's our first webinar, guys. Um, so apologies. Um, also, I don't know how to turn the notifications off. I've been playing without myself. <laughs> um, but um, here's a question. It uh, was actually the first one that was asked. Did you see anything about a move towards digital interaction and brands digitizing assets or operations? In, in what kind of sense? Can you repeat that? Please? Sure, actually. Um, Andy, if you can, I don't fully understand what you're going for. If you wouldn't mind retyping your question or editing it, we'll come back to it. But the second part of your question, um, I think, Steve, is really interesting, is do you think the concept of hygiene generally for products and phys physical experiences is going to rise in importance? Yeah, definitely. So as someone said to me, they said they went out the other, a couple of days ago and they're the only people not in a, not in a mask, which is which is just kind of showing you. And, and one of the things about this mainstream audience and, and even working class audiences, cleanliness was so important to them anyway. You go into a working class home, they're, they're spotless. Yeah, they're, There's a thing about being clean because you don't want to be judged by other people. And that's just going to be more and more accentuated. Um, I think there's another interesting story that I saw, which I don't know if you saw it in the papers, which was, the warehouse got broken into that had loads of really expensive hi-fi equipment and the people stole all the toilet papers and <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, okay, here's another one. Um, so, in your opinion, uh, what do you think would be the biggest differences between this group of people and ABC ones? So, so I think I think the connectivity with the family is 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 probably one of the big one of the bigger things. I think the sense of the collective kind of mindset I think it is one of the biggest. But actually, I think we're all starting to collide together, and I think that sense of having a country where we have dignity, having a country where we have respect, having a country where we have fairness is something that everyone's going to land on. How do we deal with children? How do we deal with childcare? How do we keep our children kind of occupied? What do we do? I think is is something that's, that's going to be played out across all the different kind, kind of groups. And it'd be interesting to see what happens with sustainability after this. Um, there's, there's different kind of takes mm -hmm. on that. But, you know, that whole kind of... the uh, Authenticity means different things to different people. This all, this audience is about being straight talking. For middle class people, it's generally about being caring and having, about the world. And I think what you're going to see is is more care coming through from all audiences. Excellent. Um, did you pick up on any hypocrisy from any of the, um, the people that we spoke to? Were people really angry about selfishness um, without actually realizing that they were behaving in quite a selfish way themselves? I think. I think. I think that's. I think that's true. I think. That, I think there is hypocrisy. I think there's a little bit of social shaming. I think some of the people probably did stockpile, even though they they claim they claim that claim they don't. But I think what that's due to was a lot to do with mass panic the semiotics of seeing empty kind of kind of shelves drawing people into that panic kind of stage and i think what we're shifting out it from is 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 the degree of mass panic towards a collective collective resilience which which i think is a real strong thing for the country good stuff um so we've kind of touched around this, but but I, I think it's uh, it's worth asking the question again. What are the main ways that you see British family life changing over the next six months as a result of this? More more connectivity with family, more yeah. connectivity with your kids, appreciating the value of of of, of children, and understand and and families and family values. And I think people. It's interesting, isn't it, with men as well. So for men, companies often would, would, would give flexi time, but men would often refuse it because they want to be the tough guy that stayed in the office and did things. I think that's really all going to change. I think people are going to get used to, to flexi and working at home and spending time with children. Yeah. The art of kind of conversations and children not being on their computer games all the time and in their bedrooms and doing things together. And, and I, think, I think it's good. Do you think there's going to be a rise in homeschooling as a result of all this? Yeah, I think there will be a rise in homesch homeschooling. And I think people are definitely tapping into other assets. So you're hearing nice stories of people giving up their time to teach English and people doing things on webinars and helping each other and communities coming together to do that kind of education. I think that's, I think that's a good thing. Well, we've learned a new webinar skill, haven't we? So yeah, we have. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, there's a few, just a few more. Um, this one, uh, just um, hold on. Um, as people are feeling like brands are doing nothing to help, does that mean that the action the brands are taking are ineffectual or self-serving, or being rejected, or just being missed? I think it's a mix. I think it's a mixture of both. I think brands are starting to do things, so I think they're starting to get noticed. So, so that Channel Four NHS stuff is is kind of kind of stepping stepping forward so i think brands will start to get more and more noticed what they're they're doing and i think when they do things it's welcome and as a brand you know before i'd always say to a brand make sure you're not tokenistic you know make sure you're doing it for the right reasons make sure make sure that you're aligned with your brand personality i think all those rules go out the window people just want to see people doing action they're not going to question your motives they just want you to do something good okay good stuff um so just a few more um to get through um any any thoughts on how sports celebrities can help over and above live pe sessions on on youtube it's a it's a it's a good good question um and I'm kind of stuck on thoughts there because my, my natural thing does go to the P. I think every celebrity can help. I think having the trust and, and dedication can allow them to, to help. 
even other celebrities, I'm going on a diversion, not sports stars, because I'm going to broaden this out to kind of celebrities, but wasn't it Piers Morgan who said he's going to pay for all the parking tickets for, for NHS staff or something I heard? Mm -hmm. So lots of things people can do. You know, you're, you're a voice, you're a voice that people kind of trust. Get out there, talk, help yeah. people, you know, give ideas. Be yeah, yeah. Kind of sport stuff um and for brands that started to focus on sustainability in the climate crisis do you think they should continue to do that pause or simply change course pause for the moment and th that might upset some people but just for the short term start thinking about how you can help people now and then i think you you you'll have the right of conversation to continue talking about mm -hmm. um sustainability in the future but I think if you talk about sustainability now, it's not the right time. Mm. We're, we're, people people want lifelines now; they want help. And I think yeah. I think that something so future orientated, although it'll come around quickly, it's not the right time at this specific moment. And I think it'll be interesting to see the positive impact of people not travelling and carbon emissions yeah. being released over a longer period of time. So it might. I think they've been dropping quite quite rapidly yeah. in China and and Italy. And I think wasn't it you, Dave, who was telling me about Venice, how the dolphins are coming back? And yeah, yeah, good old dolphins. Yeah. Um, so, just a clarification on that earlier question. Uh, the digital question was simply: uh, Everyone is moving key behaviours online by necessity. To what extent will e-commerce uh, deliveries replace a lot of physical shipping and shopping in the future? We'll strive. That will live streaming replace physical meetings, etc. So, how many of these new digital behaviours will replace existing behaviours? I think it's too early to say, and I think we need to kind of monitor, kind of, kind of be people's behaviours. I think people are going to get used more to the kind of online kind of shopping. I still feel there will be a return to local though, and and local kind of high streets and supporting local kind of businesses after this so so i think you're you're going to see two two different angles happening there i think the 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 live meetings is is an is an interesting thing i think we could um see see the return of of, of not return people doing much more meetings kind of kind of online and, and a different kind of world i think what might happen is that we're released and in, in three months potentially um and then i think we might get an outbreak again so, so I think we, we could have this stop start kind of position. So the impact on that and behavior will be interesting to monitor. Good stuff. And this is the last question, which is on the, the question uh, chat. Um, what about small businesses? Is it is it the death of enterprise? Um, I think it's going to be difficult for, for small businesses. And I think that's why I welcome the kind of what the government's kind of doing. I think in the long term, small businesses will will thrive i think people are going to turn to small businesses and, and and want small businesses to to be there and and help but in the in the short term it's there's it's massive difficulty and some a lot quite a lot can go under and i think some big brands are going to go under as well and i actually think some governments are going to collapse as well so i think there's gonna be a lot of collapsing collapsing well on that note perhaps it's time to collapse this webinar <laughs> um, that's us um so Stephen, let me just say you can see from all the questions and all the chat engagement as well it's been very well received um as steve said at the start it's a self-funded piece and we're keen for you to share uh the content the videos um we'll we'll be sending that out steve what do you reckon how quickly is that all going to get out to people um, so, so this group here we're gonna we're gonna i can try and get things out this weekend to everyone who's kind of logged in so fabulous um Thank you very much, everyone, for um, logging in today. And, um, don't be shy to follow up with any questions. Thank you. Thanks very much. Thank you, everyone. Bye.